a celebration and uh, you know really a defining moment for Project 11. Uh, just for those that don't know, it's the 11th time that this Houston ship channel in its history has been improved, whether deepening or widening. And uh, you know, it, it takes a creative Aggie, <laughs> and not this one, <laughs> to come up with a creative name of the 11th time that it's deepened and widened. We call it Project 11. But uh, so Charlie Jenkins, uh, I'll, I'll give that a <laughs> But uh, anyway, thanks for being here, but because it is a, a very important. Uh, you may notice that a lot of our business partners aren't here today. We try to keep it small uh, for health and safety reasons, but uh, we're going to welcome all of our partners as we go forward when we start digging dirt on this project. So uh, I'm joined today with two of our commissioners, uh, Clyde Fitzgerald and, and Roy Reese. Uh, Roy Meese, uh, appreciate their leadership in allowing us and giving us the direction uh, to do whatever we needed to do as the port uh, to make this thing happen. Uh, we're also joined, uh, and we, we welcome our esteemed members of Congress here today. Congressman Babin uh, is here. Congressman Al Green is gonna join us uh, shortly, I believe. Congressman Brady, Congressman Arrington. Uh, appreciate you being here with us today to help us celebrate. You've been a, uh, celebrate. You've been a tremendous uh, part of making this happen. We also have uh, uh, Jay from Senator Cornyn's staff and, and, and Jason Fuller from Senator Cruz's staff, and I think uh, we have others from uh, other uh, representatives: uh, Congressman Garcia, Congressman uh, Jackson Lee, Congressman Nels. Congressman Fletcher, Congresswoman Fletcher, uh, thank you for joining us as well. So, uh, again, without all of your unwavering support, we wouldn't be here uh, where we are today. Uh, you know, just a tenacious uh, drive to get this project done to secure. Uh, I was telling Congressman Brady just a little bit ago, you, you know, normally to get a chief's report and uh, authorization and a new start. Uh, those come with a lot of time in between. Uh, for all those to happen, it seems like within a month is unprecedented and uh, a lot has happened uh, and, and we appreciate the support uh, for that. Uh, obviously, we're also joined by uh, my good friend over the last uh, two and a half years, uh, Colonel Vale and members of his team. Byron, thank you for joining us. I know some other members are here as well, but thank you all. Uh, for being partners, and we are partners in this process. Uh, you know, uh, we've had some fun, right, Tim? That's right, fierce <laughs> urgency now, right? Fierce urgency now. The leadership of Tim, I gotta say, it's just, it's just pedal to the metal, fierce urgency now uh, to, to keep that drive going with us, and uh, thank you and your team for that. Uh, so this PPA, the Project Partnership Agreement that we, are, uh, we present today, uh, Tim, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to come up right now. You know, just in just in uh, celebration of event of, of this event today and our, our steadfast partnership and all the things that you've done, I want to uh, uh, present you with a framed signed copy of the project partnership agreement uh, between Port Houston Authority and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. So thank you very much for your, your honor. We're, we're going to do this right here. Right. Right. such an important, just, just a couple of highlights. We had the uh, president of, of Panama in here a, a few weeks ago and talked about uh, ships getting wider and how far, uh, important this project is to match the, the growing size of the vessel fleets uh, in and around the world. Uh, last year uh, has taught us of how critical our supply chain is and how critical this channel is uh, to make sure that imports and exports move whether they're 
produced here or where they're consumed here, how important it is to keep that supply chain going. Not only will Project 11 ensure this, but it will also to con uh, continue to ensure the economic pres uh, prosperity, not only of this region, not only of the state, but the entire nation. The economic impact is unprecedented and it's, it's, it's the largest port in the nation. It's the busiest channel in the nation and we have to keep it efficient and safe going forward. So this project achieves that. So we're one step closer to doing that today with this project partnership agreement and, uh, and, and making sure that this channel continues to sustain the economics uh, and, and uh, the jobs that occur in this region that has made this region and this state uh, great for generations to come. So um, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have reached this moment with not only the support from Congress and working with the Corps, all of our stakeholders, and just a collective effort to make sure this happened and happened quickly because we recognize we, we we couldn't wait. We couldn't wait if, if we don't get this job uh, completed, this project com completed, then we are going to you know cargo may go somewhere else. We can't afford to have that for, for our, our state and our country. So thank you, Colonel Vale. And I'm going to ask you now that we got the picture out of the way to come up and say a few, a few words, if you would. And uh, appreciate you being here. Thanks, sir. I just want to thank everybody for coming today. It's pretty significant. Byron Williams uh, is my civilian deputy. Uh, you know, we commanders are somewhat transient, so it's important that you know that uh, Byron's here by my side. Um, and just a brief note about civilian deputies. The first one I had really trained me well. He, he carried a motto of fact and non verba, uh, which was really about, it's, it's about acts, not words. Um, so I'm gonna use a few words today, but it's really about the acts of the team that we're here to celebrate. Um, and that's pretty significant. Um, so first, just to, to recognize that how, how all of us basically make up one team uh, focus on delivering this project. But below us, at this level, we've got the project delivery team. And the project delivery team are made up of the partners between the Port of Houston, their consultants and advisors, um, and then our Corps of Engineer team that actually span multiple districts, over 11 different districts of different echelons, worked on this project at various points in time. But they really adopted a singular motto. Lead follower, get the hell out of the way. <laughs> and that's basically what drove project delivery team um, from start to finish on this project. And as a result, they were recognized by the Corps of Engineers as one of the project delivery teams of the year for the US Army Corps of Engineers. Um, so that's not just a testament to the value and the priority that the Port of Houston has for this nation, uh, but also the commitment of and a, a commitment and a sign of what true partnership and a true sense of teamwork uh, can deliver. Um, and they deserve incredible credit. Um, with that motto of lead, follow, or get out of the way, what that really meant is they didn't allow themselves to get mired down in bureaucracy. They also didn't allow the pedants along the way ultimately to distract them from their mission. And they clearly had a mission. And they pulled off something that we rarely ever see in terms of the government. And in the course of the past 12 months, they completed the feasibility study, briefed out the chief of engineers and got the chief of engineers, the chief of engineers support for this project via a chief's report to Congress, directed a decision by the assistant secretary's office. Then they got congressional authorization and a new start. And then have awarded one with two more contracts pending to be awarded within the next 45 days, all within 12 months. That's pretty tremendous. Um, and they deserve all the credit in the world for what they've accomplished. So Harmon Brown, who's the current project manager, project manager and his counterpart from Port Houston, Charlie Jenkins, um, and the whole team, just, I, I commend you and applaud you um, for what you've done and what you're gonna do going forward to continue to deliver this project. Make no bones about it. The Galveston District team looks forward to continuing our partnership with Port Houston and the more than 200 businesses that are located along the channel. Um, we are gonna deepen uh, portions of this channel, but more, just as importantly, we're gonna widen and increase the trackability and safety of the, of, of the number one port in the nation. And that's absolutely critical to us. On behalf of my team here uh, and Byron, uh, we're very excited to be part of this historic project and 
just appreciate your trust and confidence in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to deliver. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. And there is uh, that trust and confidence that uh, helps us keep the hands on to actually complete this project. And while you said that, I, I want to uh, take just the opportunity. You know, my staff has done a tremendous job as well as uh, working with the board. I appreciate it. But, you know, Rich Burns, Charlie Jenkins, uh, Lori Brunow, who's been here for a couple of years and hasn't come up for air yet. So uh, uh, thank you all for what you did and, and many others. I would like to turn to our uh, members of Congress uh, to give a few remarks uh, about the project. Thank you again for coming. Congressman Newell, thank you for being here today. Uh, thank so you. I would just like to say, uh, Commissioner, uh, Congressman Babin, uh, we'll start with you, uh, followed by Congressman Green, and then Congressman Buddy and Congressman Arrington. So uh, thank you very much. Should I come up here? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Roger. Uh, since I was sworn in January the whatever it was, six, twentieth, uh, whatever it was, twenty fifteen, this has been uh, something that our our office has been uh, been working on and concentrating on. So uh, it's a great day. It's a it's a super it's a super day to be coming up here and in a time of. Uh, not such good news going on in our country for the last uh, a few days and quite frankly the last year and a half. Great news for the Port of Houston. I just want to say thank you to Roger, you and your staff, and the Port Commission, and I know we're missing some of them today, but <clears throat> good to see you guys and uh, the folks that have worked on this project as well. This, is a, this was a team effort all the way, has been, been top priority and it's a culmination of uh, much work that's been going on. Uh, and <clears throat> you guys and ladies uh, in here just want to say thank you so much. And as he, as he said, to get authorization, appropriation, and a new start designation all in 12 months uh, is an unprecedented achievement. Uh, Colonel Bale, thank you for uh, your office as well. I want to pat you on the back. Uh, you and I have become good friends. and. Uh, really appreciate uh, you and your staff as well. Uh, this is really the culmination of so much advocacy, it's hard to even start. Committee hearings with Army Corps, conversations with uh, former Under Secretary R.D. James. I had probably five telephone conversations and at least two in-person conversations with him. OMB calls, uh, <clears throat> many influential people I would make phone calls to. Great to know a lot of influential Texans. Chairman, uh, we, we uh, Texans know how to get things done, and uh, I'll tell you this: the point, the previous administration, uh, OMB, uh, our uh, congressional delegation uh, throughout the, the great our great state of Texas, great to see uh, West Texan come over here with their civilization. Uh, <laughs> really appreciate you being here, and uh, my colleagues from the Houston area, and in fact the whole Houston delegation. Uh, but on-site visits with senior leadership officials to the Port of Houston, the channel, uh, a crisis, basically, of, uh, of a one-way traffic of a 52-mile-long uh, 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 channel that had to, had to shut down when we had larger vessels in here. The state legislature having to step in and take care of some of that business. And now we, get, we finally are, are taking care of the problem once and for all. Uh, to never have a, uh, a uh, channel that's going to be one way again. We'll be able to handle all these big ships as well. Uh, letters to the Army Corps, letters to the President of the United States. I want to tell you something, our former President of the State of Texas. That's one reason I think we got this thing done. I will have to pat him on the back. OMB, uh, they don't like to spend money, but I'll tell you something. Uh, it's, it's an extraordinary demand on the dollars of the taxpayers in the United States of, uh, and our federal government. Uh, and uh, the competitiveness 
on many good projects around this country uh, that are competing for these dollars. Uh, uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's just amazing that the, the efforts of, of the, the individuals in this room and many other people as well, uh, that Port of Houston board, your, your staff, the congressional delegation, and, uh, and, and the commitment and love for Texas uh, that made this thing happen. And I repeatedly explained to OMB, to the Corps of Engineers, to Secretary James, to President Trump and his administration, that this would be a legacy project that would live uh, on and on with their, uh, their names attached to it. We really, really appreciate that. And it's going to be, because I think one of the most unsung entities uh, in the great state of Texas is this port. I don't think people realize just exactly how important this port is, not only to the economy of, of uh, Southeast Texas and the greater Houston area, and not only to the great state of Texas, but to the entire country. Listen, you shut this channel down, we saw that happen after Harvey, prices of gasoline spiked 45 uh, cents a gallon, it doesn't take long. So much national uh, uh, strategic fuels are made right here in this part of our great state. We've got to have an open channel. We've got to have a two-way channel and uh, to, to make sure that our economy continues on. I've, I've visited many other ports across the country being uh, serving. I'm the most senior uh, Texan on the uh, uh, Republican, that is, on, on transportation and infrastructure. I've seen other ports, great ports. West Coast, East Coast, Gulf Coast. But I'll tell you, nobody's any busier than this port right here. I'm very, very proud to have uh, be your representative, Roger, uh, of the of the great uh, Port of Houston, and uh, be one of the uh, proud members of the Houston delegation. So I just want to say how much I and proud I am to be up here, uh, thanking everyone uh, on this momentous day that I think is going to be a turning point. Uh, in our economy uh, to sustain what we have and to have it, have it to grow. 52 mile long channel. It was an experiment and it's worked and it's going to continue to work. Thank everybody up here. I appreciate you. God bless. You. to have just a word. It's always a preeminent and a privilege and a superlative pleasure to do so. I'm honored to be here with a good many of my colleagues. You've heard from one, of course, you hear from the others. Uh, and Chairman Brady, uh, while he and I sit on different sides of the aisle, I assure you I will miss him in the Congress of the United States of America. For his years of service, I think we owe him an expression of appreciation. <laughs> I see that our senators are here today. Uh, there's Senator Jay and Senator Jason. <laughs> I see them so often, you know, sometimes I get them confused, but these are some good guys, and they really do help us out. Uh, I see them at meetings, and I get a lot of messages through, a lot of things done. It means a lot. And uh, I, too, would like to uh, acknowledge our friend who's traversed some distance to be here with us. Thank you, Congressman. And uh, finally, this yes, uh, labor is in the House. I'm never going to... I uh, failed to acknowledge Clyde, who was with labor and still is for many years. We appreciate you and the service that you have performed here on the SHIP channel. And uh, for those who do not know, uh, I like to acknowledge workers on my way in. I want you to know uh, that the, the persons who greeted me from the very moment that I entered the property to the moment I came through the door were all very courteous and kind. Uh, sometimes these persons don't get the acknowledgement that they deserve, and I want you to know that you've got a great team together. Uh, Colonel, um, uh, sorry you're not in Congress. <laughs> twelve months, uh, I'm, I'm with my colleague. Uh, twelve months and you were able to pull this off. Uh, we could have used you at least ten years ago with the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund. <laughs> and we just passed it in the CARES Act. 
uh, some nine uh, billion dollars that we could have used a long time ago, but we finally got it done. And I'm proud that we were able to get it done. It means a lot uh, because it's uh, for the very purpose that we're um, here today to help us deepen and widen the channel. Uh, we have to get the super tankers in. It's important because that's where the world is headed. It's bigger and better for everything it seems nowadays. So we want to make sure that we are part of the bigger and better world and uh, get these things done. I, I just want to follow up on uh, Congressman Babin and what he said about the importance of the ship channel. My intelligence tells me that um, this port annually has 200 million tons. Now someone may have covered this already. Uh, 200 million tons of international cargo. That's pretty significant. Uh, we have 800 plus billion in economic value, uh, some $38 billion for tax purposes, that's revenue generated. 200 industrial facilities are supported, but here's the big one, 3.2 million jobs. That's pretty good. Uh, I think the jobs are important, especially in this economy, and this ship channel does its fair share to make sure that we have jobs. And I agree with uh, Congressman Babin, it does uh, have an impact not only directly here, as Dr. King put it, uh, like an inescapable network of mutuality tied to a single garment of destiny. So it impacts one directly, impacts all <coughs> indirectly. So indirectly, I think this ship channel has an impact on the economy of the world. Uh, when we shut down, it may not be felt immediately on the global stage, but eventually, it will be experienced and, and uh, there will be some impact on the global stage. So I'm honored to be here. And uh, the question that I think you want me to answer and possibly my colleagues is uh, where have we been and what have we planned to do? Uh, I've always been with you, check my voting record. And I think that uh, my colleagues can say the same. This is something that we, uh, we don't have a partisan position on. It concerns our city, our county, our state, our country, and on these issues we tend to stand together. And I think that's a good thing. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm with you now, I was with you yesterday, I'm gonna be with you today, and I assure you, you'll have my support tomorrow. The Houston Ship Channel is important to my congressional district. It really is. Uh, I don't have the privilege of saying that it's in my congressional district, but I do have the privilege of saying that it's important to my congressional district. And finally, while they are not here today, I think that I can safely say that I speak for my colleagues. Uh, I think uh, some of whom are in Washington, D.C. There's a judiciary hearing taking place, so my suspicion is that uh, Garcia and Jackson Lee are in that hearing, and Fletcher uh, is possibly in Washington, D.C. as well. But I speak for all of them when I say that um, there is a great deal of benefit in being unified when it comes to these kinds of uh, economic issues. Uh, we, we ought to be supportive of each other and supportive of our ship channel, and that way we support our, our country. It's been an honor to have these few words, and I do look forward to uh, being there for you when you need me in the future. So Colonel, thank you again for what you do. The Corps has done an outstanding job uh, in my congressional district and beyond the ship channel with uh, some of the projects that we've had uh, my, my history with the, the Corps goes back to President Bush uh, and uh, his helping me to get some deepening and widening of some of the, the tributes carries that lead into the ship channel. And, uh, I'm honored to, to, to commend the Corps for what you've done over the years. I appreciate you. I thank you, one and all. And I look forward to hearing from the chairman next, the Honorable Kevin Brady. Some Green's introductions are usually much more flowing and, and, and big about me, but I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much for having us here today. I'm just thrilled to be part of an, a historic day, not just for Houston and the region, but for Texas as well. Uh, Roger, thank you for the leadership you provide in the professional team here to support. It is just state of the art. We're so proud of it. To our, our Chairman Rick Campo and our commissioners, you know, always thinking beyond the horizon. 
you know, uh, willing to battle and, and bring people together for projects that help not just millions of workers today, but a lot of families, a lot of communities in the future as well. Thank you to our commissioners uh, for your leadership here. And, and I too want to join everyone in thanking Colonel Vail uh, for not just your hard work on this project, but on at a time when we have piled your plate so high with crucial projects uh, in the Gulf, uh, in flooding, uh, in so much here, you handle it with, with such professionalism and, and just a diligence and a positive attitude that it's a delight to work with you. So, Colonel, thank you for the, all you do for our region. I, and I so appreciate, too, the bipartisan support. Look, we, we work best when we work together. And this project's a great example of it. And it it's an unprecedented funding because it was an unprecedented effort. And that's why this has come together in record time. And without the commissioners, the business community, our energy leaders, the port, the core, you know, we wouldn't be standing here today. And I also uh, think it was important to have Speaker Pelosi here uh, to look at the port, to understand exactly what our needs are. It's crucial to have Elaine Chow Secretary of Transportation understand too, and she gets it, the national importance of here. Whenever we have the support of our two great senators, we're, we're in good shape. So having Senator Cruz uh, and, and Senator Cornyn uh, helping lead, you no know, leading this effort in Texas, and of course you need a president to sign that bill. So I appreciate President Trump uh, following through on his commitment to support us as well. Congressman Green and Babin talked about the jobs. You know, these are real jobs for real families. And they're good paying jobs. And I can't think of a more important as we're trying to work our way out of an unprecedented economic and health care crisis to have this project and these leaders stepping forward to protect those jobs now and in the future, I think is just uh, remarkable. There is a big picture here. As important it is for us, this is important to growing our, our U.S. economy as well and ensuring. America remains the top energy exporter in the world. Uh, my first job as Ways and Means Chairman wasn't to reform the tax code, it was to negotiate uh, an end to the 40 year ban on selling crude oil overseas. And we did that in a bipartisan way, but that, the impact has been just remarkable. And so when we see projects like this happen, it strengthens the US even more so, not just here at home, but around the world as well. Um, and I think too, I'll finish with this, you know, we do great things when we work together in a bipartisan way. And I think our work's not yet done. Uh, Houston is made for trade and so is Texas. But we know it's not enough to just buy Texas and you have to sell Texas and all throughout the world. We can build off the historic bipartisan support for the new trade agreement with Mexico and Canada where every member of the Texas delegation supported it. You know, we want America to lead on trade, to negotiate more trade agreements, to turn <coughs> one-way trade into two-way trade, to, to rely even more on the Port of Houston uh, for growth in our region. I think we can work together uh, on true infrastructure, really important for the growth of our region and for the country. And then, of course, I think this at this day and age, crucially important as we watch our energy companies our refiners, our petrochemical plants, and all those workers. I think it's just critical that we work together as a Houston de delegation to protect uh, Houston's jobs as the energy capital of the world as we transition to becoming the clean energy capital of the world. Those jobs are crucially important that we protect each and every one of them for working families here. So I see real opportunities for us to build off the bipartisan work that we've done here and do even more as a delegation as a state uh, for our region. With that, congratulations on just a historic thing. Thank you. <laughs> so let me introduce. <laughs> <laughs> so you may not know this, but uh, you know it's Jody Arrington. As you know, I've announced my retirement. You may not know Jody Arrington. I will become the, uh, the senior Texas Republican on Ways and Means. And he's the one who called me and said, you know, Kevin, you're getting kind of old. 
Uh, <laughs> time to, to move on. No, he did not do that. Uh, he is uh, a great leader for Texas on ways and means, has played just a crucial role, and will be the senior Republican after I retire. Having him here today, I think, is really crucially important for our region. Welcome. Thank you very much. What he really means to say is that there was a new member on the Ways and Means Committee that kept asking dumb questions, and it just flat out put him in the retirement. <laughs> <laughs> I want to apologize to the good people of Houston. Greetings from the God-fearing, freedom-loving farmers and ranchers and energy producers from God's country. West Texas, or as I like to say, Chairman Brady, the food, fuel, and fiber capital of the world. We're so grateful, and guns up, we're so grateful to your, to you and this community and our partners here. And I want to just recognize our friends and partners first, um, Director Gunther and Chairman Campo and our your team here at the Port of Houston. Thank you for your leadership and and have enjoyed working with you. And you know Captain Beal and and um, Charles Flournoy were my introductions to. Coastal ports. We have that pipeline from the largest inland port on I-27, basically, from Laredo up to the Panhandle. So the only waterways, uh, Representative Green, that I knew as a country boy from West Texas were the ir irrigated crops in the <laughs> corn and cotton fields outside of Plainview. So, uh, I, but I recognize that this is the crown jewel of Texas trading prowess, right here. This is the epicenter of Texas trade, which dominates trading and leads trading to the United States. And so, um, so thank you all, and to our, our friends and partners at the Corps of Engineers. Uh, Colonel, thank you for your leadership, and um, I agree, you should, we should have had you here a long time ago to make this thing happen quicker. But thank you for being here, commissioners, uh, for your leadership. And then my colleagues, I'm so proud to be associated with these men here. Um, I'm, I'm honored beyond words to get to serve my country in the United States Congress. And while I recognize that the uh, approval rating of Congress is lower than cockroaches and hemorrhoids, I still <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Al Green, he can preach the paint off the walls of the House chamber. And I admire him for his eloquence. We have occasions to disagree, probably more occasions than not, quite frankly. But I never question that man's motive. He loves this country. He loves his community. And when it's time to come together and do what's right for Texas and for our nation's economy to make this critical investment where all boats will rise on the tide of the successes like the project that's represented here today, he is there, and we appreciate you. Um, now, the two twin towers of Texas transportation, our senior GOP member uh, on, on TNI, uh, Ryan Babin has become a, a very, very dear friend uh, of mine. And I know I'm in your district, and you were so kind to not make fun of me. See, I told him, I said, there's not a lot of difference between East Texas and West Texas except we have all our teeth. <laughs> he was so sweet about it. And I, he, didn't even, he didn't even, you know, punch back on me when he had the microphone. Well, I went to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> but no doubt a leader, not just for your region, but for West Texas with that Ports to Plains Highway. And we're all so grateful on behalf of West Texas. And, and then my chairman, um, I don't think there's a person I know alive today from the great state of Texas that's done more for Texas in the United States Congress. Uh, he's a luminary, and uh, he, he is not just a leader. He is a luminary for Texas. And uh, between infrastructure and trade, and that was an all, all things Texas effort, um, we, the best is yet to come for uh, the Lone Star State. Uh, so from the great plains of uh, West Texas to the port city of Houston, what a powerful and important relationship and partnership we have. See, I claim that we're the capital of food, fuel, and fiber, but really, it's a Texas thing. 
because our cowboys and plowboys can produce the food and the fiber and our roughnecks and roustabouts can punch holes in the ground and bring that freedom molecule up. But if we don't have partners like the pipeliners and the processors and, and the ports like the Port of Houston, it'll just evaporate and rot the fields. But because of you all, we are the world's leader in that energy production. So on behalf of West Texas, thank you for that. Um, I'll go just about anywhere, Director Gunther, and I'll meet you anytime if I could brag about the largest cotton patch, the largest oil field, the largest cattle operation that West Texas has. So it only makes sense, Commissioner, that we would partner with the largest port in the United States of America. Wow. Over three billion jobs supported by this port. Three quarters of a trillion dollars for the great American economy. Almost $40 billion in tax revenue, so you all can provide critical services to your people out here in southeastern Texas. It's powerful. So we're grateful to be part of it. And to the Houston Ship Channel, as I'm starting to uh, refer to it as the aorta of American waterways. Wow. Texas is a special place, isn't it, Brian? Amen. Um, so thank you for letting me work alongside you, make my little tiny West Texas contribution to this project. And I believe, like my dear friends have just articulated, that this project will help our country recover, it will help our economy grow, and um, it will ensure that we deliver on America's promise to our children, prosperity and opportunity. My only last comment, and I really didn't mean to make this comment, but only an Aggie or a Corps of Engineer man or woman could name a project Project 11. <laughs> That's not like a bad sign. <laughs> really, you're gonna have a kid from Plainview who represents Hale Center and Mule Shoe come tell you about how to get a little more creative with your project names? Well, I'm gonna be so bold as to make a recommendation and maybe even move to rename this as the project to make American infrastructure great again. Or maybe Project American Prosperity. Here's my favorite. I'll leave this with you all to decide. Project Plains, Ports, and the Pipeline to Feed and Clothe the World. God bless Texas. God bless America. Thank you for letting me do that. Thank you for all your remarks, and uh, you know we, we, we know the support and the work that our our local delegation has done, but also you know coming from West Texas, I think it symbolizes you know you know champion that in, in West Texas and the rest of the country. Uh, you talk about the importance, talk about Harvey, you talk about the freeze. You know I'm not going to take credit for this, but somebody said it uh, most eloquently is that when the Houston Ship Channel sneezes, the rest of the country catches a cold. And, and, that, and, and that highlight, you know, you talk about food and fiber, uh, and, and, and across the nation is, is and the recognition of how important that is, is, is true. So uh, I want to give the opportunity to uh, Jay and uh, Jay Guerrero and Jason Fuller to make some comments on behalf of uh, Senator Cornyn and Senator Cruz. So thank you very much for being here. I know the Senator wish he could be here with all of you and and uh, thank you for all the work that's been, been done to get us to this point. Uh, he did send me here with a letter. I just wanted to, to pass on his comments to you. Dear friends, the project partnership agreement between the Army Corps of Engineers and Port Houston to expand the Houston Ship Channel surely is an impressive milestone. I am proud to have supported the federal funding for this momentous project, which are which will support the future growth and trade opportunities for both Texas and our nation. As the nation's top port in total water burn tonnage, the Houston Ship Channel has proven to be an indispensable economic asset for the state of Texas, supporting a diverse workforce of over 3 million employees. By expanding the channel, I'm confident that Port Houston will continue to operate as a global leader in trade as the safety and economic benefits of Project 11 
are appreciated by generations of Texans to come. Congratulations to Fort Houston and the Army Corps of Engineers for this partnership. I send my best wishes for your continued successful efforts going forward. Sincerely, John Cornyn, United States Senate. Thank you. Jason Fuller, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We are blessed in Houston, within 20 miles of each other, to have three uh, crown jewels, really, of, uh, that have global reach, uh, Fort Houston, Texas Medical Center, and NASA's Johnson Space Center. And of course, Fort Houston is the economic engine, not just for the region, as we said, but also for Texas and the country. Roger, to you and your team, thank you very much for all that you do, and commissioners, and then of course, Colonel Vale, as was mentioned, not just for waterways, but also the work that you do on flood mitigation. Uh, you save lives, and that matters. So let me, I have a brief letter from Senator Cruz. It is a pleasure to join the people of this nation and of Texas in commemorating the signing of Project Partnership Agreement 11 between the Port of Houston and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Galveston District. This day marks an important milestone for the Port of Houston's Ship Channel Expansion Project this project also allows us to continue maintaining and growing the crown jewel of the Texas economy. As one of the most important infrastructure assets in the country, the expansion project will accommodate anticipated growth in energy and manufacturing exports of the Port of Houston and will help ensure our ports continue to have the capacity necessary to make Texas and the United States the energy leader of the world for decades to come. I look forward to continuing working with Fort Houston and the Galveston <coughs> District towards the completion of this project. Sincerely, Ted Cruz. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Thank you, Jay and, and Jason. Uh, I want to ask uh, my commissioners if there's any words you would like to, to say. Uh, yeah, well, I don't, yeah, I'll, I'll do it from here. That'll second. be fine. Um, be fine. Thank you. Um, and you and your staff, what you've done and what you're going to do. Uh, we just appreciate it very much. And to our congressional folks, we thank you for what you've done in Washington, and we feel very comfortable you're going to be with us going forward. I'd just like to say as a young kid, in 1959, I started working as a longshoreman in this sport, and I've seen it grow to where it is today. But believe me, this is going to be the most important day in the history of this port. So many jobs is going to be created. The economy is just going to really take off. And thank you all very much. Great. Mr. Beast. I just want to say that this is one of the proudest days of my life. Three or four years ago, we got a dream and started the program. It's been a lot of hard work, thanks to the port people, thanks to the Corps particularly, and really thanks to Congress for stepping up and helping us. You know, <clears throat> I just graduated a, a, a granddaughter from a and and I just graduated a, a granddaughter from Texas Tech with honors. But that's not any more prouder than I am today for all of you folks coming together with us to make a dream and a future for this country. And that's what's happened here today, and I very much appreciate it. Thank you all.